Hello, and welcome to our first YouTube session of Harmony Yoga. Um, we're going to be going through a Hatha class today. Recommended props that you may want to have available are a blanket or something to sit on. If you do not have a blanket, that is totally fine. A towel is a fantastic substitution because it will give you support without being too soft and squishy. So a towel or a blanket, depending on what you have today. Now, if you're at home and you don't have your own yoga props, I recommend grabbing a scarf instead of a strap. If you have a strap, feel free to use it. And if you don't have two blocks, I've gathered up some tissue boxes, which are awesome to give you just enough support to transition from one place to another. So using blocks if you have them or grabbing some tissue boxes if you don't. Um, you've got a couple of options of things that you can bring in to help support your practice today. So we're going to start laying down on our backs, actually. So you can always use your towel or your blanket, whatever you've got at hand, to cushion under your head or under your knees, especially if you lay down on the ground, lay down nice and flat here, stretch your legs out and all, and you realize that your low back isn't really that comfortable. Sometimes it helps to roll up your towel and tuck it under your knees so you have a bit more of an arch. Or if you'd really like to go... Um, for the deepest level of support and space in your low back, you can bend your knees, put your feet flat on the ground. Sometimes this will help your hips rock back so you've still got some length in your lumbar spine. If you do that, you can step your knees a little bit wider and let your knees lean together until they touch. That will really create a wide band in the back edge of your body. You can have your hands wherever they're comfortable. You can rest them against the earth or put your palms on your belly. Or otherwise settle in to get really cozy here and get really comfortable. Comfortable enough that movement becomes unnecessary. Let the choices to move take you closer and closer into a place where you don't really need to or even want to move at all. Somewhere that is so still and so calm and so safe that all you really want to do is soften into it. When you come to that space... Allow your body to sink. Let your muscles melt. Let your mind start to relax a bit. Feel like the edges of your mind are melting away. So the space between your thoughts becomes wider and deeper. You can start to lower your breath if you'd like. Breathing in a little bit longer. So every inhale starts to raise a bit lower down the front edge of your body. You may feel it in your heart, across your chest. You may feel it tugging all the way down into your belly. Above your belly button. Maybe eventually even below your belly button. But let the breaths increase slowly so there's never any strain or force involved in this expansion of breath. Give yourself maybe three long, slow breaths here to your comfortable depth, allowing yourself some time to shift the rhythm of your day. And slowly allow the breath to lighten. Maybe you don't feel the breath so much down below your navel. Or quite as much in your belly at all. Maybe even across your heart. It's just a gentle trickle of movement. And as you allow your breath to ease, feel your body against the earth wherever it's landed. You can even move your fingers and toes or wrists and ankles if you want a little stretch to awaken the body. And then go ahead and bend your knees up if the legs are long. And if the knees are already bent, go ahead and separate the knees and walk the feet in so maybe the heels are more hip distance or sit bone distance apart. So from here, just kind of draw your right knee in with your right hand. Bring the thigh down towards your chest. Maybe you put your left palm on your left hip bone. 
and just feel what a level pelvis feels like. You can rest your left palm there and maybe trace a few circles with your right knee. It doesn't matter what direction you start in because after a few rotations, you can always switch that direction. Give it a few rotations the other way. And then bring that knee back in to settle in stillness over your chest. And as you hold the knee in with your right hand very gently, you can stretch the left leg out long in front of you. Let the sole of the foot slide down the mat until the toes lift and you land on the back of your heel instead. So keeping your mind's eye on the sensation of this flat hip through your left palm, maybe start to use your right hand to draw the knee towards the right edge of your mat. So maybe the thigh is not above the belly anymore. Maybe the thigh is above the curve of your waist or even hanging in the open air to the side of your body. See if you can do this without lifting that hand on your left hip. Maybe take a full breath in and out. And then we'll move your leg a little bit. So breathe in deep. And exhale, bring that right knee back over your chest. We're going to flow in between those. So inhale, let your knee open a bit wider. As you exhale, bring the knee back into where it's really comfortable and easeful. Last time, breathe in. Let the knee drift away by an inch or so to the side. Exhale, come back to center. So keep a hold of the right knee. Rebend the left knee and place the left foot flat on the ground. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh. And then wrap your hands below your left thigh, drawing the left knee down and in towards your shoulder. Good. So once you get here, you can slowly draw the toes of the right foot back so that the floating foot is a little bit more active. Breathe comfortably for a moment. And as you clasp the underside of your left thigh, keep your elbows straight. Keep your arms long. You don't have to bring in the legs too close. That'll give us room to deepen gradually. So breathe in. And as you exhale, bend your elbows just a hair to bring the legs in a little closer. Pause there and breathe in. And exhale, bend your elbows just a little bit more. Last time, breathe in. Exhale, bend your elbows a little bit deeper. Breathe in, stretch your elbows out long. Release your fingers and let the left foot settle on the mat. Fully cross your right thigh on top of your left. Let the thighs stack so there's no more daylight in between them. And then lift your left foot off the ground and use both hands to draw the crossed thighs in towards your abdomen. And here, as you give yourself a little hug, you can rock a bit side to side. Give yourself a moment to wiggle. And we'll refine this a little bit. So let your knees rock gently towards the left, just enough so that your right hip clears the earth and it's kind of floating. And as you linger here, flex both feet. Draw the toes softly back towards your knees. This should really change the sensation in your hips, especially that right one. So make sure your breath is still moving. Maybe even smile a bit. And then go ahead and soften the feet. Release the knees. Let the left foot come down to the earth. Uncross the right knee. Give it one more hug into your heart. And then stretch the right leg straight up to the sky. And as you do that, relax your arms down long on either side of your body so the arms soften. As you breathe in, let the legs stretch up. And as you exhale, draw the toes down towards your nose so the floating leg is, is kind of active. And then lower that floating leg down long towards the mat in front of you, all the way down almost until your heel touches. Before it touches, point your right toes and bend the knee, sliding the toes across the mat towards your sit bone, and then stretch the leg up high and flex the foot. Back where we started, do that twice more. Lower the heel down, reaching away through the heel, point the toes, slide the toes, let them glide over the mat towards your seat and up towards the ceiling where you last time flex and lower, and point, bend the knee, draw back. Hug the right knee in, give it a squeeze, and then put the right foot down on the ground. We're gonna repeat the whole thing on the left. So start simple. Draw the left knee in with just your left hand. Right hand can lightly rest on top of your right hip. Do a few circles with your left knee this time. Let your left knee kind of orbit around your left hip bone, one direction. And then a few orbits the other direction. 
And then when you get here, you kind of bring your thigh back into a comfortable neutral, whatever that looks like, and slide your right leg down and straight until the toes lift up and you're resting on kind of the lines of the back of your heel. So let your left hand draw your left knee open to the outside of your body for just a moment. The heel will kind of drift open too. It's going to follow the line of your knee, but keep your right hip down. So breathe in. And exhale, kind of close that knee back over your belly to where you started. Twice more, inhale, open the knee away a bit. Exhale, come back to rest. And last time, open the knee out, keeping the right hip down. Exhale, back to center. And then slide the right heel back towards your seat. Place the right foot flat and cross the left ankle on top of the right thigh. Go ahead and clasp your hands behind your right thigh. Your left hand will go in that window between the knees, right hand to the outside. And when you get there, keep the elbows long so the legs are as far away from your body as you can comfortably be without letting your fingers slide apart. Draw the left toes back so the top foot is a bit more active. Inhale. Exhale, bend your elbows just a sliver. Sensation should change a bit. Breathe into them. And exhale, bend your elbows a little bit more. Everything is just a little extra taste. Adjust to taste. Inhale. And last time, exhale, bend your elbows slightly more. Okay. Inhale, enough of that. Let the arms straighten, slide the fingers apart, put the right foot down, and then cross your left thigh flat on top of your right. No daylight. Hug both knees stacked as they are in towards your heart and just rock a bit. You can wrap your hands around your knees or hold on to your shins. Just get a little movement. And then slowly let your knees drift to the right a little bit, just so your left hip picks up. Like if you were to reach down, you could almost slide a hand underneath your left hip. That's enough distance. So once you're there, breathe in. And as you exhale, flex your feet, drawing the toes back. That'll change things, so make sure you're still breathing. Nice, long, and slow, making friends with the sensations that arise. And then allowing that left hip to sink back towards the earth, knees coming back to center. Slide the fingers off the legs, put the right foot down, and hug the left knee back into your chest. So go ahead and stretch your left leg up towards the ceiling. Let the arms loosen alongside your body. Flex your foot, drawing the toes down towards your nose, reaching out through your heel. Inhale here. And as you exhale, lower the long leg down until it's hovering just above the mat. Point your toes when you get there and glide the toes over the earth towards your sit bone. Two more times, straighten up, flex the foot, exhale, lower down. Point the toes when you're as low as you can get, glide the toes towards your sit bone, and last time up, flex, and exhale down. Point the toes, glide it in, hug that knee, and then maybe join your right knee in towards your heart as well, so both knees are in. Nice symmetrical moment to sway. It's pretty irresistible. Give yourself a little wiggle. And then as you're ready, we're going to transition up to a seat. So some people like to roll over onto their side and press up. And some people like to rock up and down like a, a rocking chair and kick their way up. So whatever is comfortable for you, I'm going to tip to the side today. Press up, lift your knees, settle into a cross leg seat. I'm going to grab my blanket and sit on that. You can grab your towel. Cross your legs in any way you'd like, just to make yourself a little bit more comfortable. Go ahead and put your hands on your knees so the hollows of your palms kind of rest in the curvature of your knees. And as you breathe in, lift your heart up and let your shoulders roll down your back. You can lift your chin so you can see the ceiling above you. And as you exhale, bring the chin down, rounding the back so the shoulders draw forward and the navel draws back towards the wall behind you. Inhale, sit up tall, puff your heart, lift your gaze. Exhale, chin down, shoulders forward, draw the belly button back so you sink in. Let's do twice more, breathing in, lifting up and looking up. And exhale, curling forward, curling inward, sinking downwards. Last time, breathe in, elevate your heart and your gaze together. Exhale, let them descend as you tuck into a little ball. Good. Come back to center, sitting up long and tall. And we're just going to roll our heads a little bit. So bring the chin down towards the hollow of your throat. And then roll your right ear over your right shoulder. And come back towards the hollow of your throat, left ear towards the left shoulder. 
back to the hollow of your throat. Maybe one more time each side over to the right. Eyes open or closed, it's up to you. And over towards the left. And this time as you roll your ear over your right shoulder, pause. If you were to open your eyes, you would see the wall in front of you, not the ceiling, not the floor. So make sure your gaze is generally forward. We're going to lift our right hand and place the hand right above your left ear so it's kind of on the top of your head. And then let your hand, your elbow, your shoulder all get heavy. We're not pulling. We're not exerting any force. We're just allowing gravity to sink the weight of our hand into our head to gently, gently traction out the left side of your neck. So breathe in. Keeping that right shoulder softening is really going to be good for spaciousness in the neck. So two breaths. Last one. All right. So it's important that you keep your head here at an angle. Don't move your neck, but lift your hand. Lift the weight off the top of your head. Bring it around. Press your palm into your lower cheek and physically correct your head to sit up on top. Good. Put the hand back on the knee. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So lower your left ear towards your left shoulder. And bring the left palm up to rest above your ear, kind of where your temple is. Soften your fingers, your palm, your wrist, your elbow. Let your bicep relax and let this left shoulder relax. It should lower down so you have a nice, comfortable valley in between your earlobe and your shoulder. So maybe two breaths. Remember, gentle. We're just using gravity and weight. That's it. Keeping your head here, lift the weight of your hand, bring it around to the underside of your face, press in to lift up, come back to center, put your hand down. So as you're here, go ahead and place your right hand on the ground, maybe a foot or so away from your body. Sweep the left arm up, keep it near your ear, and bend your lower elbow, sinking towards the curvature of your waist. Good. Once you're here, inhale and turn your gaze towards your top palm. And exhale, turn your gaze down towards your bottom hand. Maybe one more. Breathe in to look up, kind of rotating your neck, kind of like you're flossing. Exhale, look down towards your fingernails. Inhale, look up towards your floating hand. Watch it as you lift up and let the arm descend. Gaze back towards the front of the room, coming up to a full seat back where you started. So now your shoulders are over your hips and you're upright once more. Bring your hands to the ground in front of you. You can walk your hands out a little bit. Maybe bend your elbows to sink yourself downwards into a gentle fold. Now, if you want to slide your hands out in front of you, I've got no problem with that. But if it rounds your back, one thing I like to do is stay up on my fingertips. And instead of reaching forward, maybe hinge your elbows. That'll take you down while keeping your spine a little bit longer. From there, you can flatten your palms, tuck your chin, let your head dangle. Let's take one full breath here. Exhale it out. And walk your hands over towards the right. You're going to climb across your mat. Bring your heart closer to your right knee. Breathe in. Exhale, breathe out. Climb your hands all the way across the center of your mat in front of you. Over towards the left. Take a full breath in. And a full breath out. Let your hands crisscross their way back to center. And walk them all the way back in until you're sitting up long and tall. Now, switch the cross of your legs. All right. Ooh, don't lose your balance on that one like I almost did. So once you get here, go ahead and put your left palm on the ground so you're leaning to the side a bit. Sweep your right arm up. And then bend your lower elbow towards your hip bone just to shift sideways. Find your breath. Are you ready to breathe in or are you ready to breathe out? Take your time. And if you're ready to breathe in, rotate your gaze up. On your next natural exhale, rotate your gaze down towards your bottom hand. Just do that once more for each. Inhale to the top. Exhale down to the bottom. Inhale up to the ceiling. Watch the hand as you straighten your lower elbow. Sit up and release that floating hand all the way down alongside you. So again, this time with the second leg in cross, uh, crossed in front, hands back in front of you. Hinge from the elbows. Flatten the palms. Maybe slide them out if you want. So let the head hang heavy or at least relax. Bring the chin closer to the throat. Take a full breath in and out. Climb the hands to the right a bit. Even a little bit off center counts. Breathe in and out. Walk the hands across the center all the way over towards the left. One more time, breathing in and out. All right. Go ahead and walk your hands back to center. Walk the hands back to your ankles. Sit up long and tall, head to the sky. 
lift your knees, uncross your ankles. We're going to roll over to hands and knees. So go ahead and shift over to the side and press up onto all fours. If you want to put a blanket or your towel under your knees, by all means, go for it. If you feel like you don't need it, put it to the side, especially if you're on carpet. I'm going to use it today because I'm not. So go ahead and bring your hands under your shoulders. We'll take a few cat cows. So as you inhale, float your tailbone up towards the ceiling. Let your belly sag. Turn your gaze forward and slide your shoulders away from your earlobes a little bit. And as you exhale, lift your belly button up, arch your back, letting it round, tucking the chin towards the throat. Inhale, sit bones rise, head rises, heart arches open between the two. And exhale, draw the belly and the heart towards one another so the back presses up. Let's do two more. Breathe in to look forward. Breathe out to round your back, dangle your head and look back. Last one here. Inhale. Hips and head rise together. Shoulders down the back. Exhale, arch your back. Feel the space between your shoulder blades. So go ahead and come back to a comfortable neutral here, arching in neither direction. And what we're going to do is extend our right leg out behind us and tuck the toes under here to kind of brace you against the earth. So I want you to breathe in. And as you exhale, lift your belly button up towards the ceiling a little bit. It'll feel like you're hollowing out your abdomen a bit. It's going to engage your core muscles so you have the strength to float your right heel up to the height of your hips. Now, as you're here, take a moment and raise your left hand. Place the left hand on your heart and almost feel like you're pushing your heart up a little bit towards the sky. Dangle your head from here. Look back towards your right foot and look where the toes are pointing. Keep the toes rotating straight down towards the earth. A lot of times the toes like to float open to the outside of your mat. So inhale. And exhale, put your hand down. Keep the leg raised, but drift the right leg over to the left, over your supporting knee, and drop the toes down towards the outer line of your mat, or even the ground to the side. Look over your left shoulder, look back and see your toes. Keep your belly button rising to the sky. Take a full breath. Maybe even pressing back through your heel and reaching forward through the crown of your head to maximize the space in the right edge of your body. From here, go ahead and bring your gaze back in between your thumbs. Lift your right leg, bring it back to its own side, and put the knee down on the ground. So we're going to do the same thing over on the left. So extend the leg long. First thing, toes under. Before you lift the leg, let the toes ground on the mat. I want to engage your core before we add the weight. So inhale. Breathe deep. Foot stays on the ground. Exhale. Lift your belly up towards the ceiling like you're burying it in deeper into your body. Raise the heel up to hip height. Bring the right hand up. Let it touch your heart. Almost feel like your palm is lifting your heart up a bit. Dangle your head. Look back. My toes always float open, so pivot the toes to point down. Let the heel align over the middle toe. So inhale here. And you can put the right hand down. Keep the leg up and float it over towards the right. Drop the toes to the outer edge of your mat. Turn your gaze over your right shoulder. Maybe press your heel back just a bit. Reach your head forward just a bit. Taking full breaths here will actually expand the length of your side body. So go ahead and bring the head back to center. Look down. Lift the leg, keep the tummy lifted up, and then bend the knee and let it sink down to the earth. So inhale, hips up, roll the shoulders down, turn the gaze forward. We've been here before, right? Exhale, round the back, let the head dangle. Keep the arch and let the hips move backwards towards the feet. So you can sink your belly down towards your thighs, relax your elbows, and relax your head down towards the earth. Feel like your whole body is just pouring over your knees. Take a couple of breaths here. Letting every breath start to get longer and deeper and fuller, almost like you're inflating the back edge of your body. So maybe do one more breath like that. And from there, go ahead and lift your head. Turn your gaze forward so you can see your hands. Now keep your wrists in line with your shoulders here and slide your arms out straight off your shoulders so they're in long parallel lines. I like to think train tracks. Spread the space between your fingers so you're going to have a broad base once you rise up to your knees and put some weight on your hands. Let the toes scoop under so the heels stand tall.
Go ahead and press down through your wrists and lift your knees up, I would say a good foot and a half. Don't let your legs straighten yet. First, you want to straight back. So press down through your palms and reach your sit bones towards the wall behind you. Feel like you're being magnetized towards that wall. And then you can kind of relax your heels just enough to give them some release. If you want to pedal your feet here and give your calves some room, you can always raise one heel and bend that knee, then switch it to the other side. Now after a few of those, you feel a bit more comfortable. Come back into stillness. Keep the knees soft as you reach the hips back. Inhale. And as you exhale, step the feet up towards your hands. Walk your way towards the top of the mat until you're on the flats of your feet. Bend your knees enough so you can feel your spine cascading down to the ground in front of you. Take a few moments here if you want to nod your head yes or no, or roll your wrists or anything you need to do to loosen up. And then as you soften the body, go ahead and bend your knees even more deeply. Sink your hips down behind you like you're expecting someone to pull a chair out for you. So as your hips squat low, 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 reach your arms back. The elbows will be alongside the curves of your waist, palms down, thumbs open. Keep the legs in this shape and hinge your shoulders up from the knees. Press the heels into the mat to stand straight and tall. Arms ascend towards the ceiling. Let the arms release nice and wide and bring the palms together in front of your heart. Now, it's a good time to take a moment, if you've got a towel or a blanket, to put it off to the side um, just so you have freedom of movement here. So as you're at the top of your mat, palms open, breathe in and reach up. As you exhale and open your arms apart, soften your knees so they're not locked and hinge as far forward with a flat back as you can before allowing the crown of your head to dangle towards your toenails. Let the arms relax, good. All right, bring your hands up to your shins, straighten your legs, straighten your arms, and lengthen from the tailbone to the crown of your head. And as you exhale, soften your knees and bring your hands down to the earth. It's okay if only your fingertips touch. Step back with your right foot, let the toes stay curled under to support you. And then lift your hips up, giving your left foot space to step back near to the right. Make sure you can see at least a fist distance between your big toes. Keep the knees soft, press back through your hips. And as you exhale, slide the crown of your head towards the top of your mat, letting your body level out into the top of a push-up here. Go ahead and let your knees come all the way down. Uncurl your toes so they point back. And once you're here, I really want you to scoop your tailbone underneath you so your back flattens out. Bend the elbows, let them brush the edges of your ribcage as you come all the way down, rest on your belly, maybe the chin, maybe the crown of your head. Root your hips low, keep them stable. As you inhale, lift your shoulders and head to look forward. Pull the shoulders down away from your ears and exhale, relax so your gaze comes down towards the earth. Lift up off your belly, come to hands and knees. Once you're up on hands and knees, re-tuck the toes, re-lift the knees just like we did before, keep a good bend, Press down through your palms, reach back through your hips, let your heels drop if you'd like, and then step or hop if you're feeling adventurous all the way back to the top of your mat. Once you're there, palms to shins. Come to that flat standing tabletop back, and then relax, finding a nice generous bend in the knees as the spine softens forward. Go ahead and sink your hips low, like that invisible chair is gonna be there for you. Reach the arms back, elbows along your waist, keep the legs in the shape, and hinge from your hip creases, lifting the upper body first, pressing down to the heel second, opening the arms, climbing tall, and exhale, go ahead and bring the hands back together in front of your heart. Good, so just like before, we're gonna breathe in, open up, lift up, get some length, exhale wide, soften your knees, flat tabletop, spine out, and then soften it all the way down. Palms to shins, rise up halfway, give a stretch, and exhale, let your hands come down, touch. Step back with only your right foot this time. Right toes can tuck under. Now we're gonna lower our right knee down to the ground. A lot of times you might want a blanket or your towel under your back knee, so you can always grab that if you want. You can always keep your toes under if you want. If you're feeling good where you are, you can untuck the toes and let the top of the foot flatten down. From here, climb your hands up to the top of your knee, to the top of your shin, straighten through your elbows and breathe in deeply as your heart rises up. And as you exhale, just bend your elbows and let your heart come down towards your hands. We're going to do that twice more. Inhale, straighten your elbows. The stretch will get deeper through the front of your back thigh as you rise up and exhale, come all the way down, kind of bow. Last one, straighten the elbows, shoulders back, head rises up, maybe lean back a bit. 
and exhale, flow yourself down, release your hands back to frame your front foot. Once you're here, let the toes tuck under so you can lift the knee up. Lift your hips up a little bit so you have space to slide your left foot back alongside the right. Flat hands, soft knees, hips press away from your wrists, down dog. And then go ahead and roll your shoulders forward and flatten into the top of a push-up. The heels will stand tall for just a second while we let the knees come down. If you've got a blanket, you might want to remove it because we're going to come flat to our bellies. So untuck your toes, let them point. Zip your belly button up and curl your tailbone under so you've got as much of a flat back as you possible. And then bend your knees. I'm sorry, the elbows. <laughs> bend the elbows, come down to your belly. Press the hips low. Breathe in, raise the shoulders and head up a little bit. And exhale, relax. And breathe in, come to all fours, hands and knees. Toes under, knees up. Remember to keep that bend as you press your hips away from your hands. Heels can drop if it's comfortable. And then step forward with just your right foot. If you don't get all the way up towards your hands, you can reach back with your right hand and help it take that farther stride. Back knee comes down. Add that blanket. Tuck it under if you need it. Toes under or pointed. Hands come up to the top of your knee, to the top of your thigh. Breathe in. Straighten your elbows. The farther back your shoulders go, the more you're going to feel it right up here. And exhale. Bend your elbows. Just like you're gazing over your knee to look at your toe tips. Twice more. Inhale. Straighten the elbows. Bring the shoulders back a little extra each time. And then exhale. Lean forward. Yep. Our toes are still there. Last time. Inhale. Elbows straight, come up, maybe lean back a little extra. There's the ceiling, and exhale. There's the toes. Release your hands, let the fingers touch. Back toes curl under, lift that knee up, and take as many little hops or steps as you need to to get that left foot up alongside the right. Bow, soft knees. Hands to your shins, halfway lift. Stretch the head and the tailbone apart. And exhale, relax. Let the knees soften. Let the hips sink down. Reach the arms back like you're trying to feel for the seat of that chair. Thumbs point away from you. And then hinge the upper body off the lower body. Press the heels down. Open the arms. Come to standing. All the way up. Exhale. Arms all the way down to the heart center. Okay. Inhale. Rise up. Exhale. Soften your knees as you open your arms wide. Extend the spine long and dangle it down. Good. Palms to shins, halfway lift. And exhale, let your fingertips tap the earth. So step back through your right foot, and it's just going to be the right foot this time. As you balance on the ball of your foot, spin the right toes towards the right edge of your mat and spin the heel to point towards the left. Drop the heel down so you can see the arch of your foot clearly. And then lift your hands up and come to standing on the soles of your own two feet. You're going to be facing the wider line of your mat. That's totally good. So keep the front toes facing forward. The back toes can face the long edge of your mat, or if you're a little bit more comfortable, you can always tip the back toes in a little bit towards the front foot, so it's at more of a diagonal line. So as you're here, bring your hands to your hips. We're going to practice externally rotating our front leg. So glue your left foot down into the ground. And as you glue your left foot down, you're not going to move it, but you're going to try and pivot your inner thigh up and open. It's going to spin your knee, just your knee, to face straight ahead of you. You know how when you're trying to open um, a jam jar and you grasp it really hard and you try and spin, but you can't open it because that, that lid is really tight? That's the activation we're going to get here. So grasp the jam jar with your left foot and then try and turn it from the left thigh. It's going to spin the thigh open even as the shoulders stay sideways. Don't even look at that leg. So keeping the shoulders sideways, Start to kind of press your left hip crease back. Tuck it under your body. You can use your fingers. Glide your shoulders forward. Yes. Slide your hand down. Maybe you can rest on your shin. And then let the top arm rise up, aligning your wrist over your shoulders or a little bit below. So as you're here, just like we did before, breathe in and look toward your top fingertips. And exhale, turn the gaze down. Look toward your bottom fingertips. Let's just do one more of each. Inhale, look up. Letting the neck rotate, exhale, look down. As you inhale, look up. You can reach the top hand up to the sky like you're climbing an invisible rope or something. Slide the bottom hand up your leg to your hip. Open your arms front to back. 
and then bring the hands down to settle on the hips. Good. So turn your toes towards the corners of your mat. They'll turn kind of wide and the heels will dip in here. So we're totally standing sideways this time. Hands on the hips, keep the feet in place, bend your left knee over towards your left toe nose. Let your hips kind of glide across the mat. Yes. Come back to center and let your uh, other knee bend, <laughs> glide towards the back of your mat. Yes. So we'll do maybe two more. Glide towards the left. And you glide to the center and towards the right. All right, we're going to add on a little bit here, practice our balance. So hips to center, glide towards the left. And as the hips stay left, maybe lift your right toe so you're balancing on your heel. Yes. And then put the toes down, glide your hips back to center. Try it out on the right. Bend your right knee, hover your left toes, put them down, come back to center. So let's do that again. Left knee bends, right toes rise. And then come back to center, try it on the other side. Left is left. That's excellent. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put that left foot down. Bend your left knee. Lift your right toes. Lean your shoulders forward and tap the mat with your right fingers. Just your right. Keep your left hand on your hip. All right. Come up to your hip as you lower that floating foot. Bring the hips back to center. Tricky, huh? Okay. Bend your right knee. Go to the other side. Lift the toes. Lean forward and tap the earth with your left hand. Come up to the hip. Come up to standing, put the foot down, one more on each side. Bend the left, lift the right, lean down and tap with the right hand. Back to the hip, head back to the sky, put your foot down, last time, last side. Bend the right knee, float the left toes, lean forward and tap with your left fingertips. Up to the hip, back to the flats of both feet. Good. Staying on the soles of your feet here, turn your right toes towards the long edge of your mat so the foot is more parallel. Yes. Then turn your left toes open to point fully towards the top. Bend your knee, lean forward. Bring your fingertips down and spin onto the toes of your back foot. Let the toes point forward. So from here, go ahead and step your front foot towards the back, lift your hips, and reach back equally through both sit bones in down dog. Now remember, if you feel like you're rounding your spine, I highly encourage you to bend your knees more and press your sit bones back. So take a breath in. Take a breath out. And then step forward with your right foot. Bring it towards that space between your thumbs. If you need to give yourself a helping hand, literally, you can. Go ahead and spin the left toes towards the left edge of the mat. Put the foot down sideways and lift up the hands. Go ahead and come to standing. You should be facing the opposite longest edge of your mat. So again, front toes forward. The back toes will be towards the long edge or pointing a little bit inwards towards the top of your mat. Depends on what makes your knee really comfortable here. Remember that jam jar? We're going to do it again. So feel like you're grasping the, uh, the lid of that jam jar with your front foot, and you're trying to rotate it open. Watch the kneecap kind of spin to center over your shin bone. All right, sometimes it's easier the second time we do these things because we have a previous experience. So you can keep your hands on your hips and maybe tuck your right fingertips into the soft crease of your hip and push it back a little bit. Legs are going to stay straight, just the hips glide back. Slide your front hand down to your front shin. And then raise your top hand up towards the ceiling. Good. All right. Inhale, look up. Exhale, rotate to look down. One more of each. Inhale up. And exhale down. Inhale, look back up. Slow. Reach up to the ceiling. Slide your bottom hand up to your hip. Open your arms front to back. And let your hands come back to settle on your hips. All right, turn the toes towards the corners of your mat. Let the heels come in so you've got some serious duck feet here. All right, go ahead and bend into the right knee first this time. Right knee, just the knee. Back to center. Left knee, just the knee. Back to center. Let's do that one more time each side. You all know where we're going. Draw your knees as they bend towards your pinky toenail so they always open up a little back behind you. Okay, come over to the right, bend that right knee and hover your left toes, balance on your heel. Mm -hmm. Shift the weight to both feet squarely, bend the left knee, lift the right toes. All right, come back to center, one more each side. Bend the right, lift the left, glide all the way across to bend the left and lift the right. All right, so the next two times we're gonna come to center, bend the right, lift the left, lean forward, tap the ground with your left hand, 
If you're picking up something you dropped, put it in your pocket, stand up tall, put your foot down. Left knee bends, right toes elevate, lean forward, pick up the sock. I always imagine picking up laundry, come to your pocket, come to your center. One more each side, bend the right, lift the left lean forward and tap with your left fingers. Come back to center and last time, last side, left knee bends, right toes rise, lean forward, right fingertips touch and back to your pocket. Come to center, come to standing. All right, look at your back foot, your left foot, spin the toes to point, point straight out in front of you towards the long edge. Right toes pivot back to the top of your mat. Mm -hmm. Bend the front knee, lean down, bring the hands down to either side of the foot, lift the back knee up and step back to down dog. Both feet back, both knees soft, both sit bones reaching away from your wrists. Take a breath here. And then the second. And as you're ready, go ahead and bring your knees down to the earth. And sink back into a child's for a moment. So go ahead and point your toes and let your hips come back towards the arches of your feet. Maybe take two or three nice big breaths here. Last breath. And then go ahead and lift your hips. Come back up onto your hands. And as you come up to your hands, we're actually going to lift up off our hands. Come back to your hips so you're standing on your knees. So it may help if you turn to face the longest edges of your mat here. So turn sideways. You can always put a towel or a blanket under your knees when you do this. So take a moment and kind of sweep the left leg out and wide to the side. Put the sole of the foot down and turn the toes towards the longest edge of your mat. So it's pointing in the same direction as your hip bones, yeah? All right, as you're here, you can put your um, left hand on your thigh. Let your right arm reach up alongside your ear. Breathe in here, don't do anything else. And as you exhale, just zip your belly button up, up, up towards your heart, like you're zipping a windbreaker. Keep it zipped and slide your bottom hand down towards your knee, down towards your heel. Yes. Keep the belly button zipped and tucked. And then rise back to the ceiling. And lower that floating hand to rest on the outer thigh. Your palm will be nice and flat. Both palms can actually be kind of flat. It's a nice tactile sensation. You feel like you're grounded on something. But focus on this right hand down on your outer thigh. Slide it down your outer thigh towards your knee and tap the ground. There it is. Walk the hand out so it's under your shoulder. You can make a fist or you can flatten your palm. Top arm rises. Palm towards the crown of your head. Lower the bicep towards your ear without compressing your neck. It doesn't have to go super low. Keep that belly zipping, zip that windbreaker. Maybe lift your hips up a little bit higher. And then let that top arm float up. And bring that top hand down to rest on your hip. Again, just a sense of groundedness. You can slide, walk that bottom hand back to your thigh and slide it back up. Good. So you're back to where you started. Now, a little bit of a different variation. Spin these left toes open to point towards the top of your mat. Raise up the toes like we did before. Keep your hips facing the long edges of your mat. Your body is reaching all different directions. From here, with your knee facing up, your toes facing up like we did before, hand to the thigh, right arm to the sky. Belly button rises, rises, rises as you slide down over your knee joint and towards your shin. No weight on it. You should be able to lift that bottom hand and like wave high to me. And then go ahead and slide up. Bring your floating arm down to your hip. Both hands on your hip for solidity. And lower the sole of the foot, maybe spinning the toes back forward. Lean forward. Let your hands come down to the mat. And bring that foot back around so you're resting on both knees. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So actually, we can even do this from here on hands and knees. This might give you more support. So bring the right leg out to the side and flatten the foot. I think this is the better way. Walk your hands back and come up to your hips. Standing. Ta-da. Okay, as you're here, let your palms flatten on your thighs so the arms are long. Sweep the left arm up. Good. That's it. Zip the belly up. And slide the hand on your thigh down towards your ankle bone. Good. Keep your tailbone kind of tucked underneath you. 
If it's not tucked underneath you, sometimes our belly will kind of dump out towards the ground. So keep that tailbone scooping under so that you can only go so far. And then raise that top arm up and bring the palm down to touch your outer thigh. Slide down your outer thigh all the way down. The ground's actually not that far. Touch. Walk the hand out. You can make a fist or a palm underneath your shoulder. All right. Top arm rises up. Spin the palm towards the crown of your head. Lower the arm down towards your ear a little bit. Good. You don't have to go too, too far. Press into your bottom hand and pop your hips up just a smidgen extra. Yes. Keep the belly button engaged. Let the top arm rise up. Let the hand come down to your hip just so you have that foundation. You can lift your bottom palm and let those fingers climb or slide back to your thigh. Climb or slide back up to your hip. Okay, both hands on the hips. Go ahead and start to pivot those toes away from you, turning the right toes towards the short edge of your mat. And then lift the toes like we did before and balance on the back of your heel. Yeah, can your hips stay facing the long edge of your mat even as the foot kind of like talks to the hand at the front edge of your mat? Don't even look at it. So, hands to the thighs, let your arms be long. Left arm sweeps up towards your ear. Mm -hmm. Keep that belly lifted, keep the tailbone tucking very gently, and then slide over. You should go right over the bump of your knee. It should be facing the sky. Remember, no weight, just a light little brush, kind of like your blanket would feel if you were laying in bed. That's the lightness of touch we want here. And then lift that top arm up, bring the top arm down, Go ahead and flatten your foot. You can turn the toes forward towards the long edge of your mat. Lean forward. Bring the hands down. Come back onto your knees. Definitely better. Now go ahead and turn around so your body aligns with your mat, so you're facing forward. On hands and knees, every part of your body's got some cushion. Before we sink back into another child's pose, we're going to do it a bit different today. So take your knees a little bit wider apart so your thighs are kind of diagonal. Swing your toes together so they just about touch, or maybe you can touch. And then let your hips come back towards the heels of your feet. And when you sink down from here, your belly's got all this room between your knees that you can really kind of sag here. Let your head rest on the ground. And give yourself a few breaths. As you slow and deepen your breathing, can you slow the effort of your muscles, and deepen the relaxation you feel. So maybe take one last breath. One very last breath. Sometimes it feels so good it's hard to leave. Now, as you're ready, take your time, no rush. If you need an extra breath, go for it. But go ahead and pick up your hips, pick up your shoulders, pick up your head. Rise the hands and knees. Walk the knees back in so they're a little more parallel. And then we're going to come around to our sit bones. So walk your knees to whatever side you want. Lift them up. I'm going to grab my blanket. So blanket or towel, you can pad your hips. It gives your legs some more space to arrange themselves comfortably in front of you. However, keep the knees up for now. You're going to keep the feet flat. So stretch the right leg out towards the front of the room. Just let that leg extend. Lift up this left foot. Put it on the outside. Now, sometimes the, the arch of the foot doesn't quite touch. The ball of the big toe doesn't quite touch. You can always walk your foot out a little farther, closer, or out in front of you a little bit. That'll give you a chance to ground it here. So keep your right hand on your shin, just for starters, and flex those far toes so that long leg is strong and awake. Inhale and lengthen up through the crown of your head. And as you exhale, turn your heart towards the left and let that left hand come back to brush the earth behind you. Just kind of set your hand down there like a little kickstand. We're not really leaning on it too much. It's just kind of anchoring our shoulder, pulling back in that direction. Inhale here. And exhale, gently draw your belly button in deeper towards your spine. Just a little bit there, like 50% effort inwards. Breathe in. And 50% effort, lift the belly button upwards. So it's drawing back and high. Maybe one last breath. And then go ahead and turn back to face the front of the room. We're going to keep this left foot on the outside of your leg, but what we're going to do is toe and heel, toe and heel. 
the sole of the foot's gonna lift up, that's totally fine. Once the foot is kind of floating, you can see the bottom, release the knee and let it sink down. We're gonna reach down for that left foot and draw it back towards our outer hip, almost stacking our knees like firewood. Okay, again, you can have the heel out to the side if this drawing backwards is a little uncomfortable, that's okay. But sit long and tall here, keep those far toes active and hinge forward slowly, just enough to bring your fingertips down to the ground. This can be a lot. This is where I like to live. Now, keep your breath moving. If you wanna walk farther down, that's fine, but always know there's a chance to deepen once you give yourself some time to actually soften where you are. So like we did in the beginning, just breathe a little bit. And if you feel like you wanna go deeper after a few moments, instead of reaching down and kind of like hunching, what you might wanna do is just bend your elbows and hinge a bit. Keep the nice long back, keep the low effort. You always have the option of how much you want to hinge your elbows. One more breath. And if you've hinged your elbows or if your hands are way out there, go ahead and walk them back, straighten them up, come back to seated. You can kind of clasp your hands around that bottom knee and draw it up towards your heart. The foot's gonna slide back until it flattens. Uncross it, keep the knee up, and switch sides. Raising the right, extending the left. Put the foot flat to the outer edge. Again, it can be down towards your ankle or back towards your hip, but make sure the foot can really ground here. So sit up tall. Keep your left hand on the shin for now. Turn the heart over that thigh, and let the left fingertips come down to the mat behind you. Breathe in. And exhale, 50% of your energy goes to pulling your belly button back. Breathe in. The other bit of effort goes to drawing your belly button up. Feel like it's climbing out the crown of your head. It's all internal action. And then go ahead and spin your shoulders back to the front. And you can look at this uh, right foot as you toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, heel. So the foot is going to rise. You can see the arch. Relax the knee. Let it go. At this point, you can either kind of snuggle the thighs up together and keep the leg out to the side, kind of more perpendicular, or you can take that foot and bring it a little bit closer to your hip. It's okay if you can do something on this side that you couldn't do before and vice versa. If the other side you can get back here, but this side you're like, no, I'm good, fine. Stay exactly where you need to be for this moment. We are acting for the present. We are not acting for the past because you know what? The past is over. So wherever you are, inhale, exhale, slight hinge. You're going to feel it real quick. Let the fingertips come down. Smile. Even just a little Mona Lisa smile. Even just a softness around the eyes. It's going to help the breath come easier. When you cue your body to start to let go of a little bit of that worry or tension. If you feel like going deeper, after a minute, just start with a little softening of the elbows. Letting your body hinge. You don't even have to. If you try hinging and everything responds in the negative, then please listen to yourself. Last breath. It's always the poses that we really don't like that actually are the ones we really, really need. So walk your hands back, straighten your elbows, sit up tall. You can wrap your hands lightly around that top knee and draw it back towards your shoulder. Let the foot slide forward. Uncross the feet. Bend both knees up. Let both knees open apart here. You can slide your feet out in front of you a little bit. They don't have to be tucked in so close, especially if tucking the heels in towards your seat bone kind of makes you round. I always think of like a vulture. If you feel like you're hunching like a vulture, send your feet out a little farther in front of you so you have some comfortable space. Then hinge where you are. Remember to lengthen out, head away from your tailbone, and then only at the edges start to soften down. Soften your shoulders, neck and head. Soften your breath. Deep breaths will make more space in the back of your body. Maybe even in the sides of your ribcage. Taking your time, you can slowly inhale your head and shoulders up. Let your hands come up to your knees and close them as if they were a book. Feet to the ground. 
Go ahead and scoot off your blanket. Move to the side, put the blanket away, whatever's comfortable for you. And as you lay down, make sure you have, if you are lucky enough to have a strap, grab your strap. If not, I've got a scarf, just to demo that there's a lot of household objects you can use. Um, my daughter uses the belt from her bathrobe. And um, you can use the dog leash. You can get really creative here. You know, we got a lot of stuff. So just keep it nearby. You don't even need it yet. But go ahead and lay down on your back. And as you come to your back, you take that scarf, strap, dog leash, whatever you've got. Keep the knees bent for now. And you're going to draw the right knee in towards your chest and loop that strap or scarf or dog leash around the ball of your foot. Not the arch, not the heel, but up towards the ball under your toes. All right. So let that leg stretch out away from you. Let the hands slide down until the elbows bump into the ground. All right, so the leg can be up at a comfortable angle. So see if you can reach it like maybe at a diagonal from your body. So it's not, you know, horizontal, but maybe it's not quite vertical yet. You should be able to keep your leg long with no bend in the knee. You want a comfortable angle. So breathe here. Sometimes this is pretty deep. So give it a few breaths. And after some time, you should feel like this is getting a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more manageable. And once it gets a little bit more manageable, you can keep this top leg where it is. No need to change it. But slide your bottom leg down and straight out across the mat in front of you. Mm -hmm. That'll deepen it. If it pulls that top leg down a bit, away from your body and towards the earth, that's okay. So when you're here, take the tails of the strap into your right hand. So one hand has got all the strap or all the scarf. You can go ahead and place your left hand on your left hip point, kind of like we did before at the very, very beginning, just to keep your hips level, to give you a physical reminder of what level hips feel like. And then let this top leg, this right leg, hinge open to the side like a slow, creaky door. You can brace your elbow against the earth and let that leg lower to the side as much as you can still keep your hand, uh, your left hand on your hip from floating up. Take yourself another breath. This is the hardest one I find to relax in. And then go ahead and raise your leg back up to the ceiling and switch both ends of the strap into your left hand. Let the right arm have a break. Maybe wiggle your fingers a bit or roll your wrist. Shake it out. Exactly. So leave the, uh, the right arm loose here and let this right leg drift over towards your left hip and lower down over your left leg. Now the right hip is going to lift up. And you're going to rock to rest squarely on the outer edge of your left hip. Should be kind of like on your outer thigh. Keep the right shoulder down and maybe even lend some weight to that side of your body by rolling your gaze over towards your right shoulder. You can keep the leg long, but if it becomes difficult, then all I want you to do is let that long leg, the long right leg, lower down like you're drawing the heel down towards your, your bottom leg, down towards your bottom toes. And when you're ready, turn your gaze back to the sky. And let that leg hinge up towards the ceiling. Keep the leg up to the ceiling for a second. Bend your bottom leg. It's going to make it easier. Put the foot down. Then bring the top knee down to your heart. Remove the strap. Maybe hold the knee while you roll the ankle and wiggle the toes a little bit. Point and flex. Uh-huh. Okay. Put that foot down on the ground. We're going to switch sides. So take your strap or whatever you've got handy and put it around the ball of your left foot. Let the left leg lengthen out away from you. At a gentle diagonal, it's usually pretty comfortable. Hold equally to both sides of the strap. And let the elbows slide down to bump the earth so the shoulders can be broad. Take a few breaths. And then slowly start to straighten out your right leg. Let the right leg lengthen. Let it land flat. If that pulls your top leg down a bit, that's fine. Good. Take both ends of the strap in your left hand. Let your right arm have a break. Maybe bring your palm to your right hip bone. Should be a little bony bump there. Kind of cup that there and keep your hips flat as you hinge your left leg open to the side like a door swinging wide. 
Take a few moments to breathe here. Keep the right hip down. And bring the leg back up to center. We're going to switch it off. Last time, last side. Strap into the right hand. Give your left arm a break. Maybe wiggle your fingers or roll your wrists. Mm -hmm. Let that arm soften. And lower the left leg over towards the right so that your hips lift. And you rock onto your side. The hips are on their side, but the shoulders are back where they started, yeah? Keep the elbow braced against the earth so your leg is like hanging in a hammock here. And keep the leg out gently long. If the leg doesn't want to be like horizontal across the earth, or I should say maybe vertical to your body, then you can lower the leg down. So the angle is not such a right angle. You can lower it down to what, like 30 degrees or something. Roll your gaze over towards the left a little bit here. And then roll your gaze back to center and raise that leg back up to the ceiling. Good. Keep the leg up for just a heartbeat more while you bend your right leg, right foot on the ground. Draw the left knee down. Remove the strap. Hold on to that knee for a moment while you roll your ankle and move your toes. Spread the toes wide. Curl them up. Excellent. Okay. Go ahead and put your foot down on the ground. And with both knees bent and both feet on the ground, step your feet a little bit wider towards the longest edges of your mat and relax your arms completely loose and sway your knees over towards the left, up to the center and over towards the right. Let them drift back and forth a time or two. Feeling really loose, feeling very supple. And then as you bring your knees back to center, you can walk the feet back towards one another and take a final moment to lift your feet and hug your thighs down in towards your belly. Sway a little bit side to side with nice neutral legs. We did some sways with the, the feet wider. Now we're doing sways with the legs closer. And when you're done here, rocking it out, you can put your feet back down on the ground. And begin to stretch out for Shavasana. Now you may be able to stretch your legs long and feel totally fine. If not, something that may help is to take your feet a little wider apart. Maybe even beyond the edges of your mat. There's no need to confine yourself. Same things with your arms. If you're feeling tight in your shoulders, let your arms spread out like you're a starfish. If you want your blanket or your towel under your head, you can grab that and kind of pat it. And if your low back is still uncomfortable, by all means, roll up your blanket Tuck it under your knees, maybe keeping the legs a little closer for that one. Or just going for the full bend with the feet flat, knees leaning together, forming a little triangle shape between the earth and your shins. So wherever you choose to rest today, close your eyes and make those little subtle movements that are really hard to direct, very hard to articulate, but just feel needed. Those little shifts, like a house settling into the earth rerooting into its foundation until you feel comfortable enough to let the movement become a distant memory. And sometimes as you come into stillness, you may be still for a moment or two longer and then notice that something else needs to shift or change. Go ahead and adjust as long as it takes to get yourself really, truly easeful against the earth. Keeping the eyes closed. Start to melt the muscles around your eyes. This all tension of having to look and see all day. Feel that effort melting away into your temples. Cross your head into your ears. Down the edges of your face through the hinges of your jaw. And softening and lightening the tongue, the throat. Your shoulders soften. Your arms be loose. The palms be light and the fingers free. Relax your back into the ground, your hips into the earth. And your legs be gentle, relaxed in the ankles and feet and toe tips. Feel like you're just pouring your body across the earth. 
that spill over the terrain seamlessly, just as the breath spills seamlessly through your body. Give yourself a moment to let the breath come and go as easeful and as natural as possible. Give yourself some time to settle into some peace and calm. Noticing how your body breathes. Notice the sensation of your body against the floor below you. Feel what parts of you are heavy against the earth. What connects deeply? What parts are the lightest? Maybe the parts that don't even touch the ground, like the back of your knees. Or the underside of your heel. Begin to deepen the breath. Let it spread as your chest begins to rise and fall a little bit more. As the breath gets bigger and your chest gets broader, you can take some time to move your fingers and toes. Maybe spread the toes and fingers and curl them in. You can roll your wrists and ankles. And maybe find one moment to sweep your arms up alongside your ears. Stretch down through your heels as you reach back through your hands. Maybe take a second to point your toes. And then relax your arms, relax your feet. Let the knees bend, let the feet flatten on the earth. And you can take one more moment if you'd like to draw the thighs down towards the belly and lengthen the low back. You can give a little sway if you want. And then choose once again how you'd like to shift to an upright seat, rocking up and down on your spine or rolling over to the side. Rise up comfortably, rise up calmly. Preserve this energy that you built. If you want to sit on the blanket, bring it in. Rise up on top, cross your legs. Take a moment when you get there to bring the palms together in front of the heart. Let the eyes close for a moment. And just let your weight settle into this shape. Feel like you're really present. You're really fully here in whatever it is you feel on the outside through what you touch. And through the inside and your emotions and the sensation in your muscles. We'll close with our chant for peace. You're always welcome to join or listen as you feel comfortable today, but take a deep breath in when you're ready. Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free, and may thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and that freedom for all. Raise your palms up to the center of your forehead. 
honoring the light within one and all as we bow forward to the mantra, Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing, for trying our YouTube video for the first time. I'm so grateful that you showed up here. Um, if there are any questions or comments or technical feedback, feel free to email me or call me. The numbers, the contact information is on the website. Reach out anytime, and I'd be happy to adjust this so it goes as smoothly and as seamlessly as possible for you all. So until I see you next, virtually or in person, take care of yourself.